Forgiveness. We have all been hurt, felt betrayed, or wronged by something or someone. Animals act out their anger and hurt, instinctively by aggression and avoidance. Humans, on the other hand, have more complex responses to emotional injuries. Interpersonal relationships, social constraints, and societal rules prevent us from acting out our raw emotions. These external influences keep our behaviors in check. People react to transgression differently. Some accept it and move on, some carry resentment with them, and some seek revenge. In contrast to animals, the human mind has the unique ability to forgive. Forgiveness is not always easy. How does the brain react to offense, and how does it reach forgiveness? When we are offended, the automatic reactions are often resentment, anger, hurt, or combination of these emotions. These negative emotions do not only erode our mind, but also our body. Negative emotions increase cardiovascular risks, decrease sleep quality, and increase cortisol levels, which can lead to early dementia. Anger and resentment are associated with structures deep within the brain, the amygdala, the insula, and the hippocampus. Some believe these are the remnants of the more primitive mammal brain as creatures evolved. The dorsolateral prefrontal cortex has cognitive circuits that reappraise negative events in positive terms and in a benevolent manner. The result of this process is generally called relief. In the case of anger and hurt, the relief is forgiveness. Two areas of the brain, the precuneus and the inferior parietal lobule, activate the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and promote forgiveness. The precuneus is responsible for perspective. It helps us review the events and emotions from a third person's point of view. This lessens the intensity of the emotional responses. The inferior parietal lobule is activated by empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand others' feelings. The inferior parietal lobule is specific to forgiveness. It lights up when we have understanding toward the offender's sufferings. Imagine someone cutting you off in traffic. You may feel angry and want to let your anger known to the offender or take revenge. Those are primary automatic emotional responses. Perspectives put you in a witness seat and empathy gives you more compassionate points of view. It allows you to soften your rigid core beliefs or assumptions. Bad driving is not a good thing, but are anger and revenge worth the emotional distress? Is it really your job to punish the offender? Would you be less angry if you knew the driver was in a hurry to care for his sick child? Maybe the driver did not really see you and they felt horrible, but did not have a chance to apologize? These are not wishful thinking or denial. We acknowledge that an offense has occurred. But instead of letting our first emotional responses run with it, we choose to ground our mind with mindfulness and insight. Practicing mindfulness meditation can enhance perspective and empathy. The introspective nature of meditation allows us to step out of the emotional confine of painful experiences and gives us perspective. We all have unimaginable amount of empathy and compassion within us. Mindfulness meditation peels away the layers of negativity to reveal the magnificent beings that we are. So there you have it. Perspective and empathy are two of the simplest tools to build forgiveness. Your brain has all the necessary parts and your mind is ready for instructions. Practice it. Live it. A peaceful place called forgiveness awaits.